now that we know what the FCRA is and what their role is, and now we know what the creditor and the collection agency's responsibilities are, let me go over some of the top FCRA violations that are committed by the credit bureaus and show you how to find them on your credit report. Now, I know with the first part, I was telling you that the collection agencies are third-party companies are called creditors, original creditors, third parties, so on and so forth, but they are also called data furnishers. Data furnishers provide data regularly to the credit bureaus. So per the FCRA, these creditors or data furnishers are supposed to report accurate information to the credit bureaus. That's their responsibility. It has to be 100% accurate across the board with all credit bureaus that they're reporting to. So if you have, again, we'll talk about Verizon. If you have a Verizon account and it is being reported to, let's say, the three credit bureaus, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, but also LexisNexis, all of that information has to be the same on all of those bureaus. There can't be a typo. There can't be a dollar off. None of that has to be 100% accurate. This falls under certain sections under the FCRA, which I am going to show you right now. So looking at this, once again, I really, really like this. I told you guys this is under bloomcrossmafoundation.org if you want to check it out. But here it lays out the responsibility of the data furnishers. So under section 23 of the FCRA, it states, you may not furnish information that you know or consciously avoid knowing is inaccurate. Take heed to that. You may not furnish information that you know. You know, right? So if you are writing dispute letters to the creditor directly, they know. They know or they should be suspicious that the information they have is not reporting right or it's not accurate information because you are bringing it to their attention by writing them a letter. Now, I've told you guys in the past, I do not write directly to the collection agencies unless I absolutely have to, but I haven't done that in a while. I usually just dispute directly with the credit bureaus. So the credit bureaus, they have to notify the collection agency or the data furnisher that a dispute has been filed. That is another way of them acknowledging the fact or knowing that something's off with your credit report, right? So it's their job to do the investigation and then report back to the credit bureau within 30 days. So again, under section 623A1A and section 623A1C, you may not furnish information that you know or consciously avoid knowing is inaccurate. Now we're gonna go into the next section, correcting and updating information. So this is under section 623A2. Now, correct, incomplete, or inaccurate information resubmitted to the CRA and report only correct information in the future. Again, it is reinforced that these data furnishers have to report valid information. They cannot report inaccurate information or it is a violation of your rights under the FCRA. They're fully aware of that. Please understand that. They're fully, completely aware of that. But I just wanted to show you guys the facts, okay? Now, we know that these sections are barely followed. Therefore, the inaccuracies cause the violations to your rights. So now we're gonna go over the violations, not all of them, but the most common violations made under the FCRA. Once again, I am on a website that I find to be completely amazing. The breakdown is amazing, simple to the point, not long-winded, windy, clear, concise, but this website is called nolo.com. Check it out if you want more information. But as you can see here, it's giving you a breakdown on other violations under the FCRA. So these are the most common. I see them all the time. You guys might be familiar with it yourselves if you've taken a look at your credit report. Again, if you want to take a look at your credit report, feel free to check out the description. I have Smart Credit. I'm partnered with Smart Credit. It's a dollar for seven days. Go check it out. Click on the link and check out your credit report in detail. So here they're stating that 
some of the examples are failing to report that the debt was discharged in a bankruptcy. That is major. So I noticed that you guys really like my bankruptcy um, uh, YouTube videos, which is super cool. I am going to talk more about bankruptcies. But ultimately, anything reporting negatively on your credit report is open for a dispute, including a bankruptcy. So if the furnisher is failing to report proper information on your bankruptcy, you don't have to go back and forth with anybody. <laughs> Just write a dispute letter, show the inaccuracy because it violates your rights. As you can see, this is the top of the list, failing to report that a debt was discharged on a bankruptcy. I see plenty of bankruptcy charges on a credit report. I don't always see a, a discharge date. Okay. So if you notice that on your credit report, you understand you need credit repair. Uh, reporting old debts or re-aging. Re-aging is a huge violation of your rights under the FCRA. Report an account that is active when it was voluntarily closed by a consumer. That's major. I see that all the time. <laughs> reporting certain information that's more than seven years old, like lawsuits or 10-year-old chapters. So I have a new client right now, and her and I had a pretty lengthy conversation about her bankruptcy. And believe it or not, two out of the three bureaus have her discharge date correct, but the other one does it. So as far as I'm concerned, um, it's not 100% accurate across the board. However, her bankruptcy is supposed to be discharged this month, but at the end of the month, except for the inaccurate bankruptcy, which that reported January 1st of 2024. Guess what? It's still on her credit report. So that's a major violation. As you can see, reporting certain information as more than seven years old, her bankruptcy is outdated as of January 1st per the one bureau. But it's not our problem or the consumer's problem that the information isn't reporting, right? That is their problem. <laughs> so that gives me grounds alone to start a dispute and for them to instantly remove that bankruptcy. So again, I'm going through all this to say you guys have options <laughs> and become a factual disputer is very effective. Do what you want. If you want to keep writing those soft ass letters, by all means, but these are effective and this is why. This is what you want to attack when you're doing your dispute letters or you're looking to see if you need credit repair, look at your credit report and look for these items. And we're going to, I'm going to show you on an actual credit report in a minute. Now, reporting debt as charged off when you settled it or paid in full, that is huge. That is always reporting. That is super duper always reporting. Okay. People settle and it's marked as a charged off account. That's pathetic. And it actually super hurts your credit score. It can be very ugly. And they actually have the audacity to sometimes go back and forth, but it's a major violation. Mistake, uh, misstating the balance due. Yes, that is all the time, <laughs> all the time. Like I can show you multiple credit reports where this is just, sometimes it's not even on there. It's just crazy. Reporting late payments when you pay timely. Yeah, that's major. Super de duper major. Why? Because if you miss payments on your credit report, that drops your credit score immensely. And we ain't got time for that. We, we're trying to beat the clock. We got things that we're trying to get approved for. We know these credit bureaus are constantly changing and making up. You have to really fight these missed payments. I get missed payments flipped all the time, people. So if you need help with that, let me know. I will give you a heads up. Disputing missed payments is a challenge. It's not crazy hard like foreclosures, repossessions and things like that. But sometimes there are resist there is some type of resistance when it comes to disputing late payments, just so you're aware. Now listing you as a debtor on an account when you were only an authorized user, I don't see a lot of that. I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't see a lot of that at all, to be honest with you. But that is a thing that's that's obviously important. I'm not gonna read each and every one of these mixed files. So in a nutshell, what mixed files can be, um, it, some people don't even think about it. Let's say you're a junior or a senior. What if you're a, I don't know, John Doe the fourth and you have John Doe the second credit report mixed in with yours. 
that's an issue. Husband and wife, their credit report can be blended. Twins, twins, yeah, can be blended. Believe it or not, the credit bureaus actually have a section, a certain department that handles those types of accounts where you're a junior, senior, you're a twin, uh, you got similar names to somebody in your family member. So that is, that's actually a common problem. I want to say about two years ago, right before the pandemic, I guess was announced, I was dealing with a client who worked at a car dealership and he was like a John Doe too. And his father's, his father's, um, credit report was on his credit report and he didn't know that and his credit was trash because of it. So what, um, the only way we were able to figure that out is because some of the debt was literally before he was born, which is also a problem because it shouldn't be on there. It's supposed to quote unquote fall off. Right. Exactly. So there were so many violations on that credit report. Um, but that's an example of having a mixed file. A lot of times when I have couples where I'm fixing their credit, they I ask them for a bill with their name on it. And I ask them to not send me a bill with both their names on it because it could potentially mix their credit report. So that's something. That's a thing. That's a thing. So if you notice that, pay attention, you know. Um, debt dispute violations by credit reporting agencies. So one of the common things with them is when you notify a creditor that you're disputing a debt and they haven't reported it to the credit bureaus, that is a huge no, no, huge no, no. So again, I state, I don't dispute directly with the creditor, but you can, there's nothing wrong with it. Like I said before in another video, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it works for you and you're getting deletions, by all means have at it. But the creditor is supposed to inform the credit bureaus that you have filed a dispute and that there's an investigation started. So therefore, when you look at your credit report, it's supposed to say dispute or disputed or something along the lines that the file is being disputed in some way, shape or fashion, whatever wording they choose to use. But it has to obviously state that this account has been disputed. Now. The results are also supposed to reflect after the 30 days, but you have to have that. And so let's say you're doing your, you do your own dispute and you know that you're approaching round two, or maybe it's time for a second or third round. And you looked at your credit report and you see that they didn't inform the credit bureaus. They need to be deleted automatically show your proof and it should come right off. You can even call them, but you know, I'm not a fan of calling the credit bureaus. I always love a paper trail because they'll just act like they don't know who you are. But sometimes people get somewhere making a phone call. So, but something like that is obvious. So you can, that's why I said you can definitely call. Now, again, just check, check out the website if you want all the details, but even this website is not showing each and every violation. These are the top ones and, and I back them up hundred percent. These are, I see this all the time and I'm actually going to show you guys now a few examples because I have a client that I just know he's a potential client. I know him and his whole family are coming to me next week and I have to fix the whole family. <laughs> I'm excited though. Like the messier, the better as far as I'm concerned. But if, let me just block, I'm blocking out his personal information and now you guys should be able to see. So he has a lot of negative accounts going on. But like I said, a lot of these violations are even on positive accounts. Do you delete the positive? Of course you don't. You do not want to, but you want to definitely take the negative accounts and pay attention to any of the violations. So I will take... Uh, like most of his credit report is messy. That's fine. And it's perfect for the situation. I just want you guys to see, I'm always showing you to pay attention to the colors. Green is always good. Once you get the reds, yellows, and oranges and blacks, that's a problem, right? So in this case, this is a Capital One Auto. And I'm not going to go into full, full detail. Um, if you want to know how to properly dispute, look at my other videos. I'll link them 
all together. But anywho, this is an auto. It's an open account, right? Now, everything is supposed to be 100% accurate across all three credit bureaus. So what we're going to do is we're going to look for any inaccuracies. So date of last activity, that could have been anything. It could have been them paying the bill. But the TransUnion says November 30th. Experian says November 30th. Wait, the last, I'm sorry, September 9th. And then Equifax says November 1st. That's inaccurate information, right? So then you want to, I'm just looking real quick <laughs> for the sake of the training. But uh, let me see. The payment amount is okay. The date of last payment, this says November 20th, November 20th, November 1st. Okay. You just want to look at everything that is inaccurately reporting. Even if it's off by a dollar, the date it was opened, this is wrong. Okay. Two different dates. All right, let's go. You can even look at the missed payments. So I don't know the story. No, I do know the story here that I know why he has missed payments. But um, if you can see here, Hopefully this is big enough for you guys to see, but this is showing with since 2022, all the missed payments, and there's a lot of them, but missed payments are supposed to be every 30 days. So the math is supposed to go something like this, 30, 60, 90. Yeah. <laughs> so if you can see here, 2023, there's two 30 day missed payments. Then immediately after that, there's two 60-day mispayments, and then it's a 90-day mispayment, and then it goes back down to 60, and then it's two 90 mispayments. Math doesn't work like that. I don't know what timetable that they use, but that's not how it works in these streets, right? So regardless of whether or not that's an open account or not, there's just so many violations per the FCRA that you can point this out and dispute. Now here, these are collection accounts, portfolio. Some of you guys might be familiar with portfolio, but if you take a look here, portfolio has purchased the debt from the original creditor, which they did not mention. So we have no idea per Equifax who the original creditor is. That's a problem. That's a problem. However, therefore are two. <laughs> we are going to dispute this whole situation because this is a paid debt. Whoever the original creditor was, the debt has been paid off and it's a closed account and yet here they are reporting it as open. How is it an open debt when you paid it? You paid it. You paid it. So that's wrong. How am I 120 days late if the debt is paid? You are a collection agency. You paid a debt off. Now you're coming after me for the rest of the bread that I refuse to give you. When was this verified? There's no date. Just look for every, just nitpick, nitpick. And I guarantee you everything that you have found through nitpicking, okay? Because some of you guys are natural complainers anyway, right? Complain about your credit report <laughs> and nitpick, you know, say, oh, this comma wasn't in the right place. You're right. That's a violation because it's inaccurate information, which violates your rights under the FCRA. And just keep going and going and going. This is another collection agency, National Recovery. You might be familiar with them. How come there's no close date? This debt is not open. So where's the date? Huge violation. This is still reporting is open. This isn't reporting the original creditor and so on and so forth. Okay. So hopefully that helped you get more of an even better, clearer understanding of what's going on in these streets with these violations. The violations, if you're a factual disputer, such as myself, will get those deletions as quickly as possible. Now, if you really want to know what you can do about these violations, not just dispute letters, I'm going to add a little twist to it. So you, if you really, really want to know, check out the next video.